Hi guys and welcome to another Zoom chat. Today I'm very pleased to have uh, Springbok Loose Forward Marcel Kutsir with me. Marcel, thanks so much for making time to be with us and uh, how are you keeping in lockdown and just let us know where, where you are right now and how things are on your side. Well, hi Craig and thanks for the invite and um, everyone listening in. Um, it's wonderful to be on the show and stuff. And um, now, well, you know, me and the wife, um, just before the lockdown, we, we came back to South Africa here at our bush house here and Marloff Park, and, um, which is close to the Kruger. So, um, yeah, you know, um, where other people are probably struggling in flats and uh, but the industrial, we at least got nature in the bush around us, you know. So we're very fortunate to be in this position. But, uh, yeah, it's still tough on all of us, eh? For sure. Marcel, we were chatting a bit before uh, recording just uh, of how you got back um, in time. Obviously, you've got a lovely spot there to at least have a bit of space. But just chat a bit about when, um, you know, when the game went into lockdown, where you were and, and how you managed to get back to South Africa. Were there any struggles for you guys? Yeah, so we just finished playing the Cheetahs in the Pro 14. And uh, we would have gone to play Treviso in Italy that following week. And then Monday, we sort of heard a rumor that um, a virus spread out, you know. At that time, we didn't know which, what virus was it all about. And then as the week progressed, it really sounded serious. And then we discovered COVID-19 was released. And, uh, yeah, it just changed the whole format and rhythm of things going, you know. Because initially, we, we didn't think it was such a big thing. But then, it just as every week went by, it just grew rapidly, rapidly. And it came at a stage where you have to decide, oh, are you going to be in the UK for lockdown in South Africa? And I consulted my coach at that time, asking him, listen, uh, what's the plan? And he just said, listen, I think it's best you go to South Africa because this thing is really spreading like wildfire. And then when we came here, um, South Africa was in the same boat and it wasn't even a week whilst we were here. And then the whole country was on lockdown, you know. So, no, geez, it was really a serious situation, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And Marcel, just in terms of uh, how you're coping there with, um, you know, keeping busy, keeping active, keeping the body fit, um, you know, how are you going about that? Because obviously, as, as you say, it's, it, it's uncertain exactly when things will be back to normal. But, you know, how much have you been able to, to do just to, to keep fit and, and keep yourself busy? Uh, well, I am in a very fortunate position where I've got acres of land around me, you know, which you can um, do the running programs and such as well. Um, the locals um, blessed me with some of their gym equipment, yeah, as well, they, when they heard I was here, you know. So, uh, no, we try to keep it on that basis as well. But, um, yeah, but, um, you know, in all in all, um, just um, morning runs are very fond of um, running around. It's interesting when you run and there's a giraffe chasing you or there's a baboon laughing at you in a tree, you know. So, um, no, it's very interesting. You know, t weird environment, but enjoyable, I must say. And um, luckily, we are very close um, in contact with the Ulster Club. You know, we chat on a daily basis which programs to follow, which is best suited for the situation as well. And, and um, yeah, no, we just go on that sources by now and just trying to main fit. And it's like the big thing that you're saying is the uncertainty of whether or not, you know. But um, at the end of the day, you're a professional. You have to conduct yourself and you just have to be ready when, 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 when everything settles then, eh? Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, Marcel, I think um, just turning attention a little bit to the, the rugby side of things, I think we chatted, you and I, about a year or so ago, and a lot's obviously uh, changed in that time. But I think at that point, um, kind of around the beginning of, of last year, you didn't want to get ahead of yourself. You, you obviously had your ambitions to get back into the box setup, but um, you hadn't heard anything definitive. And then obviously that, that call up came and maybe just chat a little bit about um, you know, that, that moment when you received the call, whether it was from Rusty or, or anyone from the Springbok setup and, and just your emotions of, of getting the opportunity to go back into the, the box setup. Jeez, yeah, no, Craig, um, it was really, um, I was really surprised to be honest because, um, you know, you just finished your season and you came back for holidays in South Africa, which I think was three weeks. And um, at the time, you didn't really hear anything from the high setup and such. So, you know, you just assumed, oh, well, you know, they're backing their boys and that's 100% fine, you know, and you'll just work on your weaknesses and maybe catch a light maybe next time. And then literally on 99, the, the night before I was bound to leave um, back to Belfast, um, I got the phone call from Rossi. It was quite surprising, you know. We were having a bra at the time and it just escalated from there, you know. But, um, yeah, you know, and... Being a part of that mix again with your mates, guys like Yeber and Peter Steff and guys that you uh, played a lot of rugby against and with, you know, was just phenomenal, you know, being back with the whole uh, mantra of the Springboks, man. Yeah. Awesome. And Marcel, just um, maybe 
paint a picture of, of what the, the Bakken environment felt like. You know, obviously there was a, a period of, of building towards the World Cup and, and Rossi and, and his team had, had begun to start, to, I think, creating the environment that they wanted to in order to be successful in Japan. Um, you know, from, from previous experiences in the, the Springbok setup to what you, 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 you got to experience with, with Rossi and the guys, what, what was that like? Yeah. Um, just obviously just a few months away from the World Cup at that time. I think the first word that comes to mind, Craig, is a unity. Eh? Like when I arrived there, it was it was amazing to see how everyone gelled with one another. You know, from different provinces, from different countries abroad as well. You know, everyone just blended in so nicely. You know, I mean, I was there. I haven't been in the mix, part of the mix for how long? You know, and just felt right at ease with everyone. And um, the coaching setup was amazing. You know, they were so professional on what they want in the players and what they want to achieve that year. And Rossi made it you know, abundantly clear what he wanted to achieve that year. He wanted to win the rugby championship, the rugby championship sorry, and the World Cup, you know. And, um, you know, everyone was just full on ready for it, you know. And the preparation was done and the, the, the conditioning was harsh, I must say, you know. Like I said, I was on holiday, so the first couple of weeks was a bit tough, you know. But uh, luckily, the body survived, you know. But, um, yeah, and all in all, um, you know, just the whole professionalism of it all. You know, Jogli Nova, which is the head coach now, he was phenomenal as well as assistant coach at the time. Matt Crawford, who was the board coach. No, so the whole management, I can name anyone, you know, it was just so professional. They, you knew exactly where you stood and where the team was going. And um, if you get your opportunity, you had to use it then, yeah. And um, Marcel, just um, on that note, I mean, obviously you got your, your opportunity. I think it was almost exactly four years between the, the last time you'd played in 2015 and then uh, when you played again in, in 2019. I mean, just putting that Bok jersey on and, and getting a couple of opportunities to to play, what, what were those emotions like? What was that feeling like? Well, I think that test against Australia at Alice Park, you know, um, you know, when you saw your name was on the board for, you know, you were on the bench and you were going to get your opportunity again to play for your country. Oh, it was just emotional for me at the time because, you know, a year ago before that, I probably thought, um, you know, not my international career, but my rugby career would have been at an end, you know, just because of the, the bad luck that you've been experiencing with the knee and stuff. You couldn't get your rhythm going. And just, yeah, that whole week was just a bit emotional for me, you know, and it just reminded me of, you know, never give up and um, the people in my life that play a huge role, you know. So that test, you know, I think I got like 15 minutes or 60 minutes or such, but, uh, you know, you just made the most of it. You enjoyed every second of it. And, you know, it's such a huge honor to represent your country and particularly the Springboks, you know. And, uh, yeah, I know it's always, um, like I've mentioned to you in the past, it's always been a passion of mine. And, um, yeah, it was just surreal to experience that feeling again, yeah. For sure. And Marcel, just, just turning attention to, to the game uh, against Argentina, obviously where you got the injury that, that was a, a setback to any hopes of making the World Cup. I mean, I'm sure <laughs> it's, a, it's a painful one. I don't even want to ask you to have to, no, no, to reflect good. on this. <laughs> um, yeah, said, yeah. I mean, you've had your injury setbacks. So, I mean, was that helpful um, in terms of, I mean, you've, you've had the, the kind of the courage and the fortitude to get back from injuries before, but that one must have hurt. Yeah, no, that was definitely one because, um, yeah, you know, um, that was your opportunity, you know, to show the coaches what you can do and uh, show the country that um, you, you want to be in Japan and you wanted to express yourself there personally as well. And, um, yeah, it was not to be, you know, it was a simple um, act and um, just fell awkwardly, you heard it snap immediately at the time and um, just didn't want to go off the field because I knew, you know, you worked so hard to get there. And now for a simple action like that, now, oh, man, it was just, um, you know, it was demoralizing at the time. But uh, you know what? Um, you know, time heals all wounds, you know. And uh, then from the play, you became a supporter. And uh, you just supported your mates and supported the whole staff of how good they were for you those previous weeks and just monitored them as well. And then they went all the way. And I mean, you know, it was, uh, it was just phenomenal for the country at the time. And, uh, you know, for me personally, you know, it was uh, it was phenomenal to see them win the World Cup and it was great, you know, but to be so close and yet, you know, not to be able to enjoy that podium with them, it was a bit uh, demoralizing, I'm not going to lie, you know, um, it was a bit um, hard on me, but you know what, um, at the end of the day, you're one individual with millions of people with happiness and you had to tell yourself, listen, let, rather jubilate and be proud, Sally, South African, just, just focusing on yourself, because that's what the Springboks are all about, you know, it's a team environment, it's not about the individual, eh? Stride into the final stride